So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, I'm so, so excited. I've had the pleasure of watching this movie um, before it's released and absolutely think it's such a lovely movie indeed. Uh, but my guest, um, she plays an excellent character in this movie. It's Christina Rosato. Christina, welcome to the show, my love. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Oh, you know what? It is, it is an absolute pleasure. And before we talk a bit about your career, I wanted to say congratulations on the birth. I know we were just talking, uh, your little one is one years old now. Um, how is motherhood treating you? Oh, I mean, now it's, it's, I feel like now that she's turned one, it's turned a corner for the better. Um, I mean, we, she was wonderful for the first year, but anyone who has had a baby knows that that first year is just wild. <laughs> it's just full of mysteries and Googling in the middle of the night. Is this normal and not sleeping and just, just trying to keep this little human alive is, is radically difficult. <laughs> I know it's little achievements each day. You're thinking I've kept them alive. Uh, is she walking yet? Is she uh, running about? Oh, oh. Running around. So, <laughs> Oh dear. It gets a lot worse when, when they're walking, you've got to have, have eyes at the back of your head. You really do. Um, yeah. And I presume she's sleeping. Okay. Because yeah. uh, we got we got that sorted because it was in a very bad situation <laughs> like the, she was waking up every 45 minutes and had to be nursed to sleep and that was not okay for for any of us so uh, and, she sleeps I, and i love it how how people without kids always are ready to give you advice on yeah. on parenting and it's hilarious because they will not understand that what lack of sleep does for you um but let's talk about your career because um you know, again, I was I, I was new to your career, and and now literally, I want to watch everything that you're in, because oh, this nice. film is mes mesmerizing on so many levels. So, first of all, what got you into this crazy industry? Probably one of the most competitive up 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 and down industries that there is. I um I mean I I made the decision sort of when I was like six years old, which I don't think really counts as a decision, but it definitely piqued my interest young and I, I continued on the path and then actually fell in love with it later on. But originally what got me into it when I was a child, I think was just my curiosity because I wanted to do so many things. I wanted to be a, like a singer like Tina Turner and then I wanted to be an archeologist and an astronaut and a race car driver. And I think when I had the realization that actors can sort of put on different hats and try different things and travel and be different you know people quote unquote that's what originally turned me on to it and the rest is history i mean do you have a plan in place or did you have a plan in place when you were starting out in what you wanted to achieve within no, your career not at all actually i i just want to, i just knew i wanted to be an actress and uh that started in on the stage i did a lot of theater when i was younger and then I, I wanted to try film and television and I really loved it as well. So I just sort of, I always just wanted to be happy. I know that sounds cheesy, but I wanted to just do what I love to do. And I love traveling and I love meeting new people. So this was sort of a way to do all of those things. I mean, after speaking to so, so many actors, the word resilience always pops up because this industry has got so, so, so many ups, but so many downs. So how do you deal with, with all the ups and downs, what dry, drives you to keep going forwards? Because I can imagine it can be quite heart wrenching when you spend all that time doing an, or, an audition and you don't actually get it. I mean, that's most of the auditions. Um, I've been doing this now for a very long time, over 20 years now. And at the beginning, it was definitely very difficult. And I would take a lot of the rejection to heart. And it was really hard because you, you know, people say, don't take it personally, but you're putting yourself, literally yourself out there and pouring your heart into it. And it's hard to understand and to sort of un just sort of get what that means when you're younger. Not that it, not that I understand what that means now, but I think I've just gotten more, less attached to, to the auditions. I just know that auditions are, they come and they go. And if something comes great, Obviously, sometimes there's a job you really want that you don't get, but I think just getting used to the rejection, it, it just rolls off. It just rolls mm. off your shoulder after a while. Also, I think maturing and, and living life and sort of going through 
real hardships in life, I think put everything into perspective and also becoming a mother puts a lot into perspective. <laughs> I mean, I really admire, um, you know, people like yourself that, 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 that do this job because at a younger age, I did acting, I did TV and film here in the UK and I did uh, a degree in performing arts. Um, and I, I decided to walk away from it because I don't think my th skin was thick enough because, you know, when you go for a casting call and, and they want, you know, a certain person of a certain size, height, eye colour, and you get yeah. the casting director that walk, walks down that line. And before you've even gone in to actually do your audition piece, you're sent home. And for yeah. me, <clears throat> that is just devastating. It really is. And it is hard to not take it personal. So the fact that you keep on going forward um, and succeed, succeeding, I think, is 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 amazing. It really, really, really is. Uh, so you must have thick skin. Uh, I do. A, a lot now. of determination, which is good, which is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you've worked alongside so many great names. Um, so, uh, you know, which which actor really took you by surprise on working with with, with, with them opposed to how they are seen on screen? Oh, that's a tough, that's a good question. Um, who did I love working with? Oh, I loved working with Carrie Elways. He was so lovely. Um, he, I mean, I was a huge fan of The Princess Bride growing up. And so when I got the chance to work with him and meet him on set, I mean, he would, there was no dichotomy in terms of who he was. He was just as lovely in person as he seems. <laughs> and so that was really fun. But he's just such a professional and he's such a gentleman. And every day on set, he would greet the whole cast and crew, shake everybody's hand, knew people's names, always took the time to speak to whoever wanted to speak to him or was just very curious about everybody individually. And I just, I loved seeing somebody of that caliber in my eyes, just being so, so lovely in general. Mm -hmm. I think that that always, that always just strikes me in a nice way. It shouldn't be shocking when somebody is nice. <laughs> it shouldn't have that effect on us, but it, it does, you know, because you just do meet so many people that are just kind of jaded or yeah. egoey. Yeah. Egoey is a new word I just invented. You but, yeah. hear so many horror stories where actors actually enter the room before they actually enter the room. If you know yeah. what if you know what I mean about yeah. ego and everything yeah. like that, but Princess Bride is one of my favourite films, and it was actually filmed ten minutes drive from where I live here. Really, uh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, the castle, the uh, the it's hard Hardwick Hall, and and that's five minutes away, and they use that in Harry Potter as well as as uh, Snape's cool. sort sort of manner. Yeah. Um, so, if you could act opposite anyone in the industry for a day, who would you want to? Uh, you know, act opposite, come toe to toe with? Who? I mean, I would probably be intimidated off to be, to act in front of some of my favorites, but I also do believe that when you act opposite someone who's great, they make you mm -hmm. great. You know, they make you sort of step up to the plate. I, um, I'm a huge fan of Marion Cotillard, who is a, a French actress from Par from France. I think everything she does is amazing. And I think she's really interesting. I would love to to work with her, and um, gosh, I mean, Penelope Cruz, I think might be one of my favorite actresses, and to do something with her where I play her cousin or I don't know something where we could we could go head to head and just act opposite that fire that is in her, I would love that. She's incredible. I mean, you speak for if I'm right in what I've read, you speak four languages. So mm -hmm. is there a language, actually, you would like to, if you ha had to choose one language to act in for the rest of your life, what language would you choose? Whoa, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, I think just because of the films. Oh, that's a really good question. I w I'm going to say Italian. I'm going to say Italian because that was my first language. And I think there's something about um, the language that is your mother tongue that just unlocks more mm. in you. And I have chills as I say that. <laughs> I think that it just opens up. It's interesting because I've acted in every language and I feel different 
in acting in different languages. I feel sometimes I'm more accessible for certain things in one language versus another. And, uh, and so I think Italian for me would be interesting because it feels the, mo- the closest to my heart. I mean, I must be really weird, but I watch foreign movies without subtitles, not knowing the language, but just That's watching incredible. the body lang- language and just <laughs> trying to determine it. what they're I, talking I, about. The tone and the feeling, you can understand that 100%. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've lived, I've, I've, I've lived, lived in Cyprus, and I've lived, lived in Spain. So a lot of the foreign t- t- TV wouldn't necessarily come with subtitles. So I was often <laughs> sat there watching programs, you know, in other languages, and it is fascinating. It really is. But let's yeah. talk about this movie, which is going to be released on di- digital release on the twelfth of September, um, and it's just, it's just an, an an astonishing film. It really, really is. I've actually watched it twice. Uh, because really? I'm one of these people that I'll watch a movie and then I'll watch it for the second time because I think you get a different experience when you watch it again. Um, but this is Ariel uh, back to Buenos Aires. Uh, if you could tell all the lovely viewers and listeners um, a bit about the movie and whom you play. Sure. Um, this movie is uh, actually based on true events, which is something I find very interesting. Um, I'm, the movie is about two siblings who live in Canada and they want to visit their homeland of Argentina. They're in their 30s, they're sort of both in a funk, and they go back to visit where they come from. And while they're there, they discover the very sensual, passionate world of the Argentine tango. And they also learn a little bit more about why their family actually left Argentina um, when they did. And that sort of uncovers a um, little bit of d- a darker history and past. And that's the part that's rooted in, in, in true in the real events. Mm. I mean, what attracted you to this project and the role of Diana? I, um, I'll never forget the email my agent sent me when she said, I remember the title, it said, beautiful film filming in Buenos Aires, here's the audition. And I read the script and I read uh, the character description and everything that it entailed. And, you know, it basically was this incredible story but then I would have to go to Argentina. So that would make me travel, which I'd never been to South America. So that was really intriguing. And I would get to learn the tango, which was just a dream to be put into training for tango. I'm not a dancer in this movie, so I don't, I didn't need to look by professional by any means. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) Um, but, But even to, even to dance, like sort of very basic, it took a lot of training because it's difficult. Um, and yeah, and then I met the director, Alison Murray. We met via Zoom, actually. I did a callback, like a, I did my first round of audition. I sent in my tape and then I had a callback with her on Zoom and we chatted and we just got along so well. I felt like I knew this character. I understood. And, uh, and then I got to learn about Argentina's history, which I had no, no idea about, to be honest. And it was just mesmerizing. It was incredible. I mean, to be honest, I didn't realize either uh, about yeah. all these events. And this is what I like about movies like this, where it's not nice to see on screen, but I think it's so important to be shown on screen because we need to learn and evolve. And, and, and you know, it's just, it, it was just heartbreaking to find out that this actually happened. It, it, it was. Um, but I mean, obviously, you talk about the film in locations, and it's just incredible. The cinematography in this mo- so mo- movie is like art. It really, really yeah. is. I mean, Absolutely. what 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 was it like when you got there and you started filming? I mean, how amazing was that? I mean, it was a real pinch me situation because this is a dream come true for any actor, really. Um, we were working with the top crew in Argentina and they have a really, really flourishing film scene. They have incredible artists there. I mean, you can see, you saw the film, it's beautiful. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, like the film or not, it's the cinematography, the art, the the sets, the, like everything, the, the wardrobes are just stunning. They, they did such a fantastic job. And so it felt special when we were filming it. Oh, and the other thing that's interesting is that I play Diana and my brother Davey in the film. We're the siblings who travel back to Argentina, just for those of you who haven't watched the movie yet. And funny story, they auditioned all across Canada for these roles and 
they cast Raphael Gross Harvey, who plays Davy and myself, and we were actually longtime friends, and we had no idea we were auditioning for the project. <laughs> yeah, which is that never happens. Oh. And yeah, so we had been friends for ages, and when we found out we both sort of booked the roles, we said, "Oh well, isn't she lucky?" Because we have like a built-in relationship already, so it made being brother and sister really, really easy for us. And then, and then obviously you start filming and then the pandemic happened, which oh, shut God. everything down. I mean, yeah. I mean, what was that like? I mean, I heard that you had a bit of a, a mission getting back home um, on flight, but yeah. how did that affect production? And obviously, you know, the film is, is, is quite tense in places and, 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 very heartfelt in places as well. So how did that affect production on going back as well and picking up where you left off uh, so it didn't feel like literally it was two parts? It was, so we shut down, it was about a week of like pretty dire in, in pandemic that was happening before we shut down. And we kind of heard it, but then it was a good week before like a week from when it started getting really bad in Italy, for instance, which is where most of my family is. So I was on my phone, I was hearing about all this stuff and my heart was just breaking, mm. hearing about everything. And so it was scary and I, I and scary also because here we were shooting this incredible project and nobody wanted to leave, but I also just wanted to get home. Mm. It was just the weirdest feeling. Um, anyway, so we shut down, that was, such an emotional time for everybody it was you know as it is it takes forever to get a movie up and going in independent production and poor allison who wrote the film directed the film was producing the film you know she's been like 12 years in the making and we had to shut down and nobody knew anything so cut to a year and a half later is when we got to filming it to finishing it and i was so concerned we were all so worried about like is this even going to match because mm. as I don't know if people know this, but we often you don't shoot a movie in sequence. So we had shot, you know, multiple scenes kind of scattered throughout the film and whatever we had left had to go in there. And we're like, do we even look the same? Like we've all been through this pandemic and... So would you like to take home a piece of film history or TV history into your own home? Find your own piece of magic with Prop Store, the world's leading auctioneers of film props, costumes, and more. So check out propstore.com or follow the link in the description of this video. And while you're doing that, why don't you use our special code? Our special code will give you 10% off anything in the buy now section. And the code is easy to remember. It's Brian10. That's B-R-Y-A-N-10, and it's just above the finger, just here. Use that at the checkout to get your 10% off. That's propstore.com. I mean, I remember so clearly every scene that we shot. I remember so clearly the scenes that we were filming when I found out about what was going on. It was so, it felt like such a, a specific moment in time that is like frozen, you know? Well, um, after, yeah. after watching the mo movie, you can't tell. So which, which, oh, which, which, which is a great thing because oh. when I read that, I was like, really? I, yeah. I, I, I could not tell. I, and um, we, so went, we went back in, uh, to Montevideo in, in Uruguay. We couldn't even go back to Buenos Aires. And we had a whole new, we had a new cinematographer. We had new hair and makeup. We had like oh, new wow. everything. Yeah. Because we just, we couldn't get the same people. They were tied up. They, Allison had been trying to get it back off the ground for like a year, you know, and then to line everybody up and everybody's availabilities. There were some people we had to just continue on without because it was just impossible. Well, thank goodness it got finished because I should imag imagine there's quite a few projects out, out out there, very very similar that had to shut down that never got that yeah. that chance to 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 actually finish it. So you come back and you self isolate. Um, how yeah. did you occupy yourself during that time, with the exception of becoming a hairdresser uh, from <laughs> from your so social media? Which, to you be honest, <laughs> I have been there. My wife cut my hair, and um, yeah, I didn't want to go out for a while, 
So that um, was so I feel funny. sorry for him. I saw that, but he, bless his heart, he didn't even get angry, as you could, you saw. He was just, he was just like, oh no, he had just had so much faith in me. <laughs> I just let him down. <laughs> oh, it's really funny. Um, and then, and then I presume, yeah. did you, did you write the kids' book, uh, the children's book, mm-hmm. while while you was off? I've got a picture of that actually. Look, look at me being all prepared. Um, yeah. Which is there you go. Yeah. Which um, I mean, I read. Well, if you want to describe what the book is, book book is 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 about and what it was intended for, because I think it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. You read it. You were able to. No, no. no I think the idea, yeah. and yeah, yeah, and yeah. I yeah. want to get it for my girls because uh, I think the premise of of it, I think, is beautiful. Really is. Oh, I could send you a copy. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the Hero Two is a book that I wrote with my cousin. Um, we're very, we're best friends. We've been best friends our whole lives. And uh, sort of through the pandemic, we talked a lot about everything we were worried about. And she had a two-year-old daughter at the time who's now four or five. And that's actually a likeness of her on the cover. Mm. <laughs> yeah, And uh, we just were talking about how difficult it is to navigate all this and how difficult it was for children, little little toddlers to understand what was going on. This was at the very beginning when we knew nothing and when we were just sort of staying home and not knowing what was happening. And so we thought, how cool would it be to make something to help parents talk to their children about big feelings and what's going on and just something to make the children feel seen and maybe bring up topics. And so we decided, oh yeah, let's write this book and and see if maybe we could partner with um, a good organization. So we partnered with Save the Children and we uh, we found an artist who did all the artwork for free, who was amazing, Leanne Thiessen. And we made the book, we put it out there by donation and all the proceeds went to save the children. They're like relief efforts on the ground. So it was, it was a really, really nice project to work on. Which is a great thing to do. Cause I think that kids, again, the, the word resilience, um, you know, kids are great. Um, but obviously from a social aspect, I think it affected everyone. It did my, my, my girls massively, uh, because of Obviously, they're like social butterflies at that age. So uh, to be taken away from friends, but we got around it. Good old technology. Um, But but let's go back to this movie, uh, because Davey, uh, who who is the character of your brother in the film, is going through so much. But Diana is also on a journey of discovery. Uh, I've got I've got I've got to say, Um, I mean, how challenging was it to play Diana? Um, to bring that character to screen? I, I I didn't find it too challenging to bring her to screen because her struggles felt quite real and quite grounded. And um, and because Raphael, who played Davy, and I already had a rapport, it was easy to sort of just drop in and be the overbearing sister. <laughs> I also have a little brother in real life, so it was easy to <laughs> tap in to, to, to that. Um, She's definitely different than I am in that, you know, she was more, I don't want to say controlling, but controlling and kind of nosy, for lack of a better word. But but she discovered a lot while on this trip. I mean, I mean, it's very clever what this film film does, because you think it's centered around Day, Day, Davy, which a lot of it is. But yeah. I, I, I think Diana, you know, I feel feel for that character. I really, really do. And it's it's really good how the balance is there where on one side you've got certain feelings for, for Davy and then for Diana. And, um, you know, when people watch this movie, they'll understand what I mean by that. Um, but it's just absolutely beautiful and heartbreaking. And I've got to say, I did, I did cry at the end. Oh, I couldn't really help happy. it. And yeah. um, so, so, again, people have to watch it to find out yeah. if it's sad, good, bad, you know, it's just fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You will love it. I mean, obviously you have so many great moments on screen and this, as you mentioned, this film centers around the culture of Argentina and obviously the tango being one of the main things. Um, when you were learning, how easy was it to pick up the dance moves? Because, Not you know, it's one, of, it's, it's one of those dancers that people learn for years because it is an art form in itself. I I knew nothing truly about the Argentine tango before this film. I knew the tango that I had seen on, you know, Dancing with the Stars or ballroom type of stuff, which is so wildly different than the Argentine tango. 
the Argentine tango is more of a social dance. You know, the way salsa is different when you watch it on a screen where they're like, boom, 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 boom. Like, it's not that it's, it's just smaller and it's intimate. And I, it looks hard. The Argentine tango looks hard and it is hard. <laughs> uh, I did not pick it up easily. And I do have kind of a dance background. I was never a professional dancer, but I've been dancing my whole life. And it has nothing to do with any of that. The only thing that made that that helped me with was maybe learning like choreography, remembering choreography, but it's such a different way to move. And it's so intimate because you're hugging another person while you're dancing. It's really beautiful. Honestly, I fell in love with it. I, I now continue dancing Argentine tango since learning it because I, it just, just sparked a real passion in me and which I could relate with Diana because she also fell in love with the Argentine tango. And I, and that, I totally and that, am. And that was going to be my next quest question is if you kept that up and, and if, and Absolutely. if uh, you're le le learning it now, um, I mean, I've got to give a, a, a shout out to the production designers because one of my favorite scenes is in the club, you know, the tango club. Oh, yeah. um, and with you see all the chairs around and the people dressed immaculately and you've got the band and everything like that. I mean, what yeah. was it like to shoot, you know, in that scene? Because it made me want to go there and dance, even though I've got two left feet and I'll probably take quite a, quite a, quite a few people out at the same time. <laughs> But what 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 was it like being in that envir environment again, helping you with your character and and what 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 you was there to do? It felt magical, and that sounds so hokey, but it felt magical because it was so beautiful. The costumes were beautiful. The band was playing. It was sounded incredible. We were listening to this beautiful music all day watching. I was just sitting there between takes watching these dancers, just like, how do they do this? They're so incredible. They're also such lovely people. I mean, the whole experience of being in Argentina and, and, and going to these milongas, which is these, these, which are these tango clubs that you'll see a lot of in this film, different types of milongas. I, I just like, I was like, this is, I am going to take this in as much as I can and enjoy this because it's very special. I mean, the great thing about that, that, that scene, it felt so authentic. It felt like they just literally pulled people off the streets, got, 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 got I mean, them sat down because, I mean, where did, where, where did they get all those actors from? Are they? Well, so my, the director, Alison, and her husband, Carlos, um, are actually also tango champions. They're oh, real... Wow. Champions, yeah, they're incredible. They they were actually Carlos, her husband, was our one of our uh, tango instructors for the film, um, and so they just have a huge tango community. So all those dancers were like friends of theirs or friends of friends, and I mean they were all hired, you know, background performers and whatnot. But they just knew so many people who were dancers, and so it just was. I mean, some of the people in the film are some of the top dancers in the world, like uh, Juan Malizia who plays, um, he plays Juan in the movie, who's the, the dance instructor. He's an incredible tango dancer. And him and his um, partner, Manuela, she's not in the film, but she's incredible. And then Sol, uh, who is another tango dancer who plays one of the other actresses' dance doubles. I mean, if you check out their stuff, you will be mind blown. So we felt very lucky to have all of these like world-class tango dancers in our film. I mean, what 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 would you like audiences to take away from this 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 film after watching it? Because there is so many emotions there, and obviously there is an important story there. But what would you like all the audiences to walk away thinking af, af, after watching it? Well, I hope it teaches them something because I certainly learned about what what is still going on in Argentina um, with with the with with the topic of this movie and um and i hope it gives people the urge to go out and dance <laughs> i i do i hope i i'm i want people to learn but i think um allison did a fantastic job in weaving sort of political issues in with this beautiful backdrop of tango and i think that's not lost on me and i think if it inspires people to go out and take a tango class i mean i think that's really cool <laughs> I think a great sign of a mo movie is where it finishes and the next day you think about the characters and, and want to know where their journey is going to go next. 
you know, and I think with this film, um, you know, it's it's great. I mean, it'll be great to get a continuation to find out what happens next, um, which 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 would be quite nice. Yeah, yeah, a sequel. I mean, I, think I have an idea of what Diana does, but that's just my personal, you know, bias. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the character, but um, yeah. I've got two more questions before we wrap this sure. up, and I'll let you get on your way. Um, knowing what you know now, Christina, if you travel back in time to yourself when you were first starting out, what bit of advice would you give yourself uh, knowing what you know now? Have more fun, have more fun. Don't, you're not gonna get book every job, but just go in there and have a good time and just show them what you got. And if it's not what they're looking for, then you're not, you're not, you're, you're not for it, you know? And then uh, the last question is, have you got anything planned for the release day of the 12th of September? Um, I, I don't have anything planned, actually. I, uh, <laughs> I live on a small island called Salt Spring Island, and uh, my friends do want to throw a viewing party. But I, I really cringe at watching myself on screen, so watching myself with a bunch of other people around is also not, doesn't sound like fun to me. <laughs> Um, so no, we, we don't have anything planned right now, actually. This is well, sort I, of anticlimactic. But. Well, I think that you should let your friends throw a party for you because it's an absolutely amazing film. Uh, great journey, great story, great everything. So go out, um, uh, well, get it on digital 12th of sep sep September, which is in a couple of days. Uh, Ooh, and, yeah. and, and everyone's going to love it. But Christina, thank you so much for being, being a guest on the show. It's been an absolute joy speaking to you. Uh, and I wish you all the best. And I look forward to everything that you do in the future. Oh, thanks so much. It was lovely speaking to you. And thanks for watching the movie twice. <laughs> <laughs>